Hello, it's me. I'm back again, finally, at long last. Um, before I get too far into this video, apologies if there's a little bit of background noise. It is raining rather heavily today where I am, uh, so I'll just kind of have to put up with that. But it is that time again, sketchbook tour. And um, yeah, this one has taken me a little bit longer than I'd like to complete but there's a few reasons for that. I'll get into them as I go through. Um, certain points of the video, I'll probably do close-ups and insert photos, maybe insert little videos in video. That's a thing, that's the term. Um, yes, let's just, let's just get into it, shall we? Fro front cover, as always. Ooh, am I in frame? I am in frame. I tend to decorate the heck out of my sketchbooks so this is my own little logo sticker in the corner that I always put on my sketchbooks um, and I make a lot of stickers myself I buy a lot of stickers in as well there's a little combination of everything really silly things mostly decorative bits and bobs the little smiley face label here my boyfriend did that because he bought himself a label maker for work and of course has to label something that I own. Inside covers, let me take these bits out. These are just some stickers and some other bits and bobs that I haven't found a home for yet. They'll probably go on my new sketchbook once I get to decorating that, which will be quite soon, I'd imagine. Inside covers are, well, very crowded, shall I say. This uh, Pedro Pascal was part of the Pedro Tober that I did last year. Uh, this sketchbook actually starts uh, with the rest of my Draw Tober challenges, of which I did three last year. I won't be doing three again because that took up far too much time. That is one of the drawings that I did for Pedro Tober, though, that I'm quite fond of, so I made it into a sticker to decorate the inside of my sketchbook. That is the sticker that I got for taking part in Pedro Toba, which was hosted by Morg Design on Instagram. It was a really fun, fun prompt list to do, and I got to know loads of really cool artists as I was doing it as well. So it was definitely a big bonus for me. This bit here, I don't know how well you can see it, but underneath some sellotape is a tiny little chip of nail varnish from a girl I used to work with in my previous job and she wanted to give me something to remember her by so she gave me a piece of her nail varnish which I have stuck in there so Sophie if you ever watch this thank you very much I still have your nail varnish uh, the silly things Mr Blobby there's another Pedro sticker there from Morgue Design my main man Rilakuma and just other little bits and bobs I've collected there's like fruit stickers, well that's not a fruit, that's a tomato sticker, and yeah, banana stickers. I can't, I find it very difficult to throw things away. I've mentioned that in previous videos before, but yeah, it's a little, it's a little problem I have. Nothing really on the first couple of pages because with these sketchbooks that I use, the MD paper ones, the first covers are always a little bit awkward because it's, it's not stuck to the inside cover but it sort of is in a way so this is just something that I did to fill up space all art is subjective so draw the silliest things if that's what makes you happy and I stand by that so as I was saying this sketchbook takes place takes place no it doesn't take place it starts what am I talking about that's embarrassing it starts towards the end of October part way through the several drawing challenges I was doing that month. So 25th of October, we have a Pedro Toba one. That was favorite meme when he is Plankton from SpongeBob SquarePants. I will breeze quickly through these ones. There's not that many of them because it starts towards the end of October. So there wasn't that many prompts left. So I'm not really gonna explain these much. And on one of the pages, I did stick two prompts face to face because I didn't like how they looked in the sketchbook and I got fed up of seeing them. So I just like sandwiched the pages together with glue. This one though, 
that one's I'm, I'm quite fond of this one the Met Gala look um, yep more silly things cute little bunny little mushroom man another Pedro caterpillar Pedro yet again um, as you can kind of see the tape that I use on the edge of this page this is where I stuck two together because I was like I don't want to see those drawings anymore they don't exist blah 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 Pedro I think that was yeah that was the last prompt of the month I believe yeah 31st of October and then the last prompt for uh, Peachtober because I did very little peaches drawtober prompt list as well so it was loads of like spooky things because 31st of, uh, 31st of October being Halloween kind of have to do pumpkins don't you or something like that bit of a scrapbook page to use up bits that I'd accumulated uh, <laughs> of the Beatles you will see in the sketchbook the further it goes on my love for silly pun based drawings came back with full force a lot of them are just doodly pages as well so post-it note drawings little almost like a flip book type thing there possum doodles screaming stuff david byrne in his gigantic suit more scrapbook stuff uh, i tend to eat for breakfast on days that i'm not working because i have more time for it Pan au chocolat. It is my favourite ever breakfast related pastry. I am just, oh, fully obsessed with them. <laughs> Scrapbook stuff. I reached out to my followers on Instagram to give me drawing prompts for the, these couple of pages because I was kind of stuck as to what to do. So I've got some pretty good ones. Um, a horse sized duck, two frogs playing chess. An otter, a Mars bar eating a human, and a trumpet jazz chicken. Bob Mortimer in his cheesy puff wig. Long live Bob Mortimer, we love him. More scrapbook type bits and bobs. Mostly stickers and bits of drawings that I kind of just chopped up and decided to put there. Breakfast plate. I do develop quite... I love for drawing breakfast related things in this sketchbook that will become very evident as we go through as you can see these were all um, colored fine liners and I do think I got quite good at them eggs especially are fun to do and I have drawn a lot of egg based drawings in this sketchbook and I'll probably do more of my new one scrapbook stuff Henry Hoover. I don't know if Henry Hoovers exist outside of the UK or if they are as popular here. Well, popular in other places if they exist in other places outside of the UK. But he's a vacuum Hoover with a face. So that's fun. Caterpillars and weird bug type things. Vic and Bob doodles. All of my favourite characters there. Big page of strawberries. I love this page. This one, this drawing right here, probably one of the best fine liner drawings I've ever done. It is just so, so good. And I love the vibrancy of all the pink and the red. It's just, it's a page you want to eat. Um, I don't really know what that is about because it's not, as the stamp says, it's not fucking brilliant. So there you go. Um, I did a load of like portrait studies of portraits from the 18th century that I found through Pinterest. Just to kind of ease myself back into portraiture, which I do enjoy and I probably should do more of. Because I quite like how this one turned out. This is all sort of brush pen, sort of fine little swooshy lines to get that good look of hair more scrapbook stuff um these were done with the pens that i got for christmas 
they are, if I can remember the name rightly, I think it's Zebra that make them. And they're from Japan and they're like these felt tip pens that are retractable and they don't dry out because they haven't got any caps on the end. They draw in moisture from the air and that's what keeps the nibs wet, I guess. But the colours on them are brilliant and they come in four different packets or like four different colourways and I have all four different colourways. I got two for Christmas and I bought the other two myself is just like I have to complete the whole set. More scrapbook stuff. Little bees in bonnets. So if you know the phrase oh so and so's got a bee in their bonnet it's usually they're kind of annoyed about something. That's how I've always been taught the phrase as. So I did little bees in bonnets. Strawberry. Get it? Yeah, get it? Oh god, I'm awful. Um, <laughs> I tried to do some Valentine's themed drawings because I was going to try and make cards, but I got incredibly busy and I never actually got round to making cards. Uh, this was a sort of the beginning of the year when I had a lot going on and the time to make art itself, let alone make other products from my art, was very thin on the ground. But I still like these drawings. I like the little lollipops and the pears. Um, some of these are unfinished, annoyingly. Uh, these are all post-it notes with different ideas I had for drawings on them. Can't really see underneath there. That was meant to be bugs and kisses. Cute little ones. This Let's Canoodle. I really like how that one turned out. The face is super cute and I just like the overall style of it. Yeah, some of these are slightly unfinished. The dim sum one's quite cute. I did these, actually I coloured these with the Artex acrylic markers that I am so in love with. I think they're so, so good. And I've used them a hell of a lot towards the end of this sketchbook as well. Um, and yeah, oh, this one. This is a project that I did, when did I start it? March-ish time, March, April. So there is a cafe in Bristol that I like to frequent called Boston Tea Party on the very top of Park Street. They have a few others like dotted around the country. It's like a quite a popular chain. They put a post out on their Instagram asking for locally based artists and illustrators in Bristol to create pieces of artwork to put on the walls of the cafe because they were redoing the whole vibe of the place. So I was like, yeah, I don't mind making something. And I did. So this is kind of the process that I went through ideas wise, what I was going to make. And it took me back quite a bit to GCSE, A-level art days in school and how I'd have to plan out projects in my sketchbooks back then. So it was kind of fun. It was a little bit of nostalgia. So I was coming up with different ideas. The piece had to be either A1 or A2 sized. I went with A2, I believe, because I found the idea or the thought of doing an A1 piece a little bit too daunting, given in mind that I always draw in an A5 sketchbook. So, which is quite small as it is. So to do something on a much bigger scale I was like oh god but it ended up being really really good so yeah I was trying out different mediums fine liners marker pens pencils paint pens so I'm mean, in the end I ended up going with a mixture of it was paint pens markers and pencil because for what I wanted to do I felt that that was the best option this was a sketch of the drawing that I ended up going with. I did this on my iPad in Procreate and then I enlarged it onto an A2 scale and then printed out in sections. I kind of like jigsawed it all together so I didn't have to try and draw it freehand on a larger scale, which the idea just, oh, horrendous. So you can't really see very well because I was, I was testing out sort of different background ideas, but basically that's a smaller version of the piece that I ended up doing. And I think even here, it looks really, really good. And I took different photos throughout the stages of making the piece, so the materials I used, how it looked enlarged, 
on a bigger scale. I'll insert some photos actually so you can get a better idea of what I was doing. Ideas for backgrounds because I didn't want to have this big plain white background. So I was I going to do gingham, was I going to do sort of like wavy check patterns. I ended up going with something like this but not with all the different pastel multicolours. I ended up doing shades of different blues because their cafe logo is sort of different shades of blue and then I sort of printed out the sketch and tried it with different backgrounds just to see what worked better this um, I just scribbled down little sort of bits of the colour pencil I was using the markers just to I guess for record sake remind myself of what I was doing this is a photo of the final piece. I will insert a bigger photo here so you can see it a little bit better than this little piddly diddly one there. And then we're moving on to silly stuff such as drawing a Starion from Baldur's Gate 3, a video game that I still have not yet played, but I really want to and I just drew him anyway because he's fun. And I have been watching, although not recently because I haven't had the time to, uh, the Twitch streams of Neil Newborn playing Baldur's Gate 3. And I've been watching the streams of Andrew Wincott as well doing the signings just because he's so... Oh, Andrew Wincott's voice is incredible. And for the character of Raphael, it's just, I can't imagine anybody else voicing Raphael. I can't imagine anybody else voicing Astarian. It's just the casting, the voices, absolute perfection. These are silly Easter themed doodles, apart from this one here, which is the famous painting, a girl with a pearl earring, but it is a pearl with a girl earring. And I know people have done it before. I'm not claiming this is the first time anyone's done this. I just kind of wanted to do my version, so yeah. <laughs> These are really daft. I love the hot cross bun, the little angry hot cross bun. See the whole pun thing? I can't get away from it. Post-it note doodles of different carrier bags. I don't know why I did this. I think it was again just something to fill up space in my sketchbook. Scrapbooking stuff again, lots of tags, stamps, receipt heads. Um, that was a bag from a donut place I went to, some stuff from Lush. Scrap drawings that I got rid of. What else do we have? Oh yeah, so these are other silly drawings. Um, I'm quite fond of this one, I think I might expand on it further at some point. But it's the idea of a lot of the friends that I've made throughout my teens and even now are all through the internet. So I do this like little computer that says all my friends live in here because most of my friends do live inside a computer or my phone. That sounds sad a little bit when I say it out loud, but it's not, I don't think, because it's true. Um, a baguette. French toast. This one, when I first did it, cracked me up. It's a good night's sleep and it's a night in shining armour asleep. Yeah, you get it. Cute little tomatoes. Uh, two bees dressed as Shakespeare. Two bee or not two bee. I love, love these little tomato characters. I think they're so cute. Especially the one that's like dropped on the floor and he's smushed. He's going to mutt. Uh oh. And this little one has been cut in half. The, the beefcake tomato is quite funny as well. Because it's meant to be a play on the whole beefsteak tomato. It's kind of annoying how I feel I have to explain myself. But I don't want the puns to be missed. If it helps people understand them a bit better. So, you know. Uh, traffic jam. <laughs> this one. Um... I think it's funny, but not like hilariously funny. I just think it's silly. But when I showed this to my old assistant manager, she thought it was one of the funniest things she'd ever seen. So when I left my old job, I drew her own version for her. So she always has it as like a memento. Uh, me in a nutshell. Yeah. 
other silly like prawn doodles. I tried to draw cute, biblically accurate angels. And I think I did okay. That one's cute. I think that one's cute as well. It's all sort of like anime style eyes. Uh, yeah, silly stuff. This was all Artex acrylic markers as well. As were these. I tried to draw animal food hybrid. So you have an asparagus, a katsuma, and a beagle. Beagle bagel. Silly aliens, because I bought one of those Ikea alien plushies. And I just wanted to see if I could draw it with a fountain pen. Yeah. They're kind of cute, actually. I think at the time when I drew them, I was like, oh, I hate these. But in hindsight, they're not like the best drawings, but they're not certainly the worst. Oh, so this is when I started drawing lots of fruits and vegetables with the Artex Acrylics markers. So this raspberry took forever to do. Forever. But regardless of that fact, I think it looks really good. These are just some other doodles and drawings again with the acrylic markers and then we go more into this so there's different food items fruits vegetables baked goods sandwiches this tomato how this turned out i'm so so impressed with i love how this looks the sort of not broken apart but the open bagel sandwich it could be better certainly not the best but certainly not the worst thing I've drawn this egg however I ooh, I love this egg I think it turned out so good and especially with adding bits of blue and purple shading into it, it gives it I think so much more dimension and at first I was like oh does it look like mold and maybe it it might it might initially read as that but I do think adding different colours like that into a drawing does give it more dimension. Again, more silly drawings. Uh, these ones I did at work during a quite quiet period. And these ones as well. Sir Loin. The daftest drawing I've done for a while, but I think it's so funny. These are bits of sushi I did with the acrylic markers. The backgrounds are the Koei Noor um, magic pencils which are those ones that are they have like loads of different colours in the lead so it gives you that effect of like different rainbow colours as you're colouring it in which I really like especially this one. I think this looks really really cool how all the colours like blend together. And those are some other ones as well. There's like a neon one uh, there's one that they call American flag, which is red, white and blue in the lead. So yeah, they're really good. I want to use those pencils a bit more, I think. Another scrapbook stuff. Um, this one I did on holiday. Well, it wasn't really holiday. I went away in August to Ireland for a few days and I drew that while I was there. This is, as you can tell, very unfinished. It was a Dungeons and Dragons character that I came up with in... 2021 but I never really finished it at all I may go back to it someday just other things take precedence at the moment really to be honest with you other little mushrooms <laughs> I don't know why I had the idea of drawing a mushroom as like a sheriff or a cowboy but I did and then he's saying there ain't mushroom in this town for both of us partner and then I just expanded on him a bit more here, drew him again. This. Can we just take a moment and appreciate the sheer majesty of this? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let you sort of drink it all in. It's a good one. I have nothing else to say other than that. These are drawings from a much older sketchbook. These are from, gosh, I want to say 2019. 
the sketchbook that they were originally in completely fell apart because it was a very cheap sketchbook so all the pages the the spine of the sketchbook got absolutely wrecked meaning all the pages fell out so i had to go on a bit of a rescue mission so i put them in here to take up a bit more space let's turn the page these doodles i did a couple weeks ago while i was waiting for my boyfriend to be done at the barbers so i just sat in a cafe doodling to pass time i think they're quite cute i quite like this little frog very distinguished frog gentleman and these these i think are quite cute i had in my head this idea of a a sun character or the sun as a character and I also had the little I don't know if it's a nursery rhyme or it's an actual song from something but it's like the sun has got his hat on and he's coming out to play so I did him with one of those little brightly coloured propeller hats and he's flying a kite he's looking at the flowers growing this one I didn't finish but he's trying to eat an ice cream but it's melted because he's too hot and that, my friends, is pretty much the end of the sketchbook, really. The rest of these pages are ones that I've sort of tested pens out on, washi tapes, and just stuck down various other bits and bobs. So there's no real reason for me to properly explain them because they're pretty self-explanatory themselves. As you can see, it's just swatches, another little miscellaneous bits and bobs there. So yeah, that is pretty much it, folks. I hopefully will be back potentially sooner than a year's time to show you what else I've created. I hope that this has been enjoyable to you all. Thank you very much for your patience, as always, in my terribly lacklustre uploading. But for those of you that stick around, I appreciate it a lot. So thank you very much. And I will see you all again at some point soon, perhaps. Bye.